never looked back in a series opening win. Yesterday, the Mets scored three in the first and made it stand up to even the series. The finale features Jordan Zimmerman and Zach Wheeler on a beautiful Sunday afternoon in D.C. Perfect weather for baseball at Nationals Park. High 60s today, maybe into the 70s. Bit of a breeze blowing in the yard. A lot of folks going to be here today to see if Matt Williams' club can do some clubbing with those bats against the Mets and win a series with the Reds coming in tomorrow night. Bob and FP, welcome to the ballpark. The lineup together for seven innings this year. The starting rotation for about a week. And now after Doug Fister comes back last week, Gio Gonzalez goes on the DL. And you spotted something pretty pretty early about his left-handed delivery last night. Yeah, he just wasn't getting his arm up, and he wasn't really finishing his pitches. So we knew something was wrong with Gio Gonzalez yesterday, a guy that's got 161 consecutive starts without missing a turn for an injury. And you look at his release point yesterday and the curveball, we're talking about how much torque goes into the arm and how much arm strength it takes to create the spin on Gio Gonzalez's curveball. And he's just kind of leaving it out there. And even more than that was the way he was finishing his fastball, not to the glove side, but to you know outside to right-handers. And you could just tell there was something different there, something wrong. Last two starts, not jobbing. So Gio Gonzalez goes on the DL, and Blake Trinan probably take over for him here uh, in his next start. And in the meantime, an extra arm in the bullpen, Ryan Matthews back with the ball club. Jordan Zimmerman, we'd love to see him have Matt not really use the bullpen today. Get off to a good start. First inning's been a problem for a lot of Nationals pitchers, but Jordan has made 16 career starts against the Mets. Two sides that know each other pretty well. I mean, it's so cliche, but he has to keep the ball down. Get this stat. Balls hit to the infield for Jordan Zimmerman this year. An 082 average against. Balls hit to the outfield 667. That's 46 for 69. So when he keeps the ball down and he gets ground balls, very effective. Last time out, the slider was good early, but he lost it halfway through the game. So off-speed key to a guy that opponents have it's jumped on early. They like the first pitch against Jordan. There's a former All-Star who's coming alive at shortstop. Ian Desmond's been on base 19 of his last 20 ball games. Over the last six, seven hits, two homers, seven RBIs, and hitting nearly 320. Ian Desmond appears to be back. Now let's see who else in the lineup can add to it and do some damage against the Mets.
Nationals baseball on Masson. Brought to you by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. And by Coons when you're talking cars. You're talking Coons. Rubber game in a three-game series. The Nats are two games over 500. A half game back of the Braves again today. And Jordan Zimmerman will take on the Mets, who are second from the bottom in hitting in the National League. Visit trainsearch.com to find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. So very comfortable. A bit breezy at the ballpark. 67 on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. The Mets are hitting 229, but they're sixth in runs. And Lucas Duda has actually been much better away from City Field. 328 on the road. That's seventh best of any visiting player in the National League, hitting 250 overall. Something about City Field not suiting him. He's also three for 18 career against Jordan Zimmerman, who faces the Mets for the 17th time. This is his ninth start of the year, and he's only had three decisions so far. Well, fastball 94 for Jordan. Key for him to keep it down. The slider 86 was good at times last outing against Arizona. Curveball 78, change up 5% of the time at 86. Just odd to see a guy like Jordan, who loves to pitch into ball games deep as a rule, only have three decisions in eight starts so far this year. Looking for his 46th career win, trying to even his record against the Mets to five and five. Opponents hitting 444 on the first pitch off Jordan this season, 12 for 27. Eric Young Jr., the left fielder. In the series, one for nine with an RBI and a walk. On the grass at third, Anthony Rendon, even with a bag at first, Tyler Moore. First pitch of the ball game right in there at 137. First time ever, John Byrne will have the plate for a major league game. Lance Barrett, crew chief Dana DeMuth, and Ed Hickox around the bases. Bunt in the air, Tyler Moore. Coming in, running full, steam and diving for that first out. That is being ready to play. Talked about it yesterday. He's a fielder. The first ball that's hit to you. Are you ready to play a major league game? Tyler Moore with an emphatic yes. Full layout. Look at that. Look at the effort right out of the gate from Tyler Moore. Put four stars next to Superman right there. <laughs> Fired up everybody in his ball club. The first base dugout, the fans here. Didn't take long to get everybody to their feet on the play of Tyler Moore. Wow. I'm ready. I have never seen Tyler Moore parallel to the ground until that moment. Oh, those shots that were, was amazing. Those shots were fantastic. Fastball outside to Daniel Murphy. I mean, that got me ready. Let's go. And a swing and a foul tip. Well, we showed Lucas Duda hitting 328 on the road. Daniel Murphy's at 340. And this guy doing it all for the Mets. He's hit 316 career against Jordan Zimmerman with 12 hits, three of those home runs. Two and one. Yeah, it'll be off the plate inside. 96. Had a good crackle to it as it went into the mid of Wilson Ramos. And by the way, Ramos catching every inning of this series so far. Yeah, first time he's gone three in a row. That's in there. Murphy a move toward first. Still have to stop. Well, 96 to a location. So the fastball jumping for Jordan here early. Perfect spot. Stay down there. 96. It's nice. Want to make a guy ahead of David Wright earn his way aboard. Murphy will follow it away. In St. Louis today, Gavin Floyd for the Braves. In about 40 minutes. And Jaime Garcia comes off the DL to start against Atlanta. Braves have lost the first two games of that series, and they've lost three in a row overall. They're just a half game up, up on the Nets. 
And a 3-2, and there's Murphy doing his thing again. He's now four for nine with two walks in this series. So the defense for the Nats today behind Jordan Zimmerman, McLeod Span, worth the outfield, Desmond Rendon left side, Kevin Franzen getting a start at second base today instead of Danny Espinoza. That's his natural position, folks. Kevin Franzen came up as a second baseman, and you already saw Tyler Moore, Wilson Ramos behind the plate. Tyler holding a man who now has a 10 game hitting streak in Daniel Murphy. David Wright in this series, two for eight. Zimmerman's now given up an unusual amount of hits this year. That's 52 hits in 43 innings. And FP talked about location. That's been huge. That one's way inside 2 0. Opponents have had 131 plate appearances against Jordan this year. 44 line drives hitting those 131 plate appearances. 36 of those for hits. That's an 818 average. So when the fastball's down into a spot, that's when he's locked in. That's when he's the Jordan Zimmerman from last year. But there's been times this year where he's got a little bit too much plate and it's been elevated. I'll tell you what, though, today early returns, the fastball is jumping out of his hand better than I've seen it all year. 95, 96 already. And as that graphic showed, you hasn't suffered from the first inning problems other Nats starters have. 2-1 to David Wright, and he's a little late for it. No, his first 25 pitch is good, just a 186 average against. Told you yesterday that Daniel Murphy and David Wright are giving the Mets almost one third of their offense right now. They're right around 32% between the two of them. In terms of their total number of hits, Murphy a short lead, long look, and a step off by Zimmerman. You have to pay attention to Daniel Murphy. He's stolen nine out of 11. Fastball high and tight. Ramos held it there for a moment. It's a good pitch. Count goes three and two. Let's see what pitch track thinks. You see what Jordan thinks. Not sure what to expect with a rookie umpire behind the plate today. Made his major league debut Friday night. And here he is calling balls and strikes. John Byrne for the first time. Pitch track, everything middle in. And David Wright takes that. Two on, one out. So, Dan, with all the first inning problems this year, even though Jordan's not been a part of most of that, you know some questions have come up about guys getting ready for games. Yeah, they have, and Matt Williams has gotten a lot of those questions over the last handful of weeks, and he said last night, he was asked about it again after Geo struggled in the first inning, he said, listen, we have we keep logs of how many pitches guys throw in the bullpen and in their warm-ups prior to games. We've gone back three years and looked at those logs, and everything has stayed exactly the same. Within two or three pitches, the results have been exactly the same. So he's a little... Oh, they got Murphy at third base. So, Dan, we'll get back to you in the bottom of the first inning. Heads up play by Ian Desmond on what's going to be a 3-6-5 double play. Terry Collins is going to challenge here, at least think about it, after he hears from his clubhouse and his dugout. But right now, a 3-6-5 double play. And, FP, we've seen Desmond try this before. And this time, Daniel Murphy appeared to go too far. Well, it's a good lesson for all you kids out there that there's always an out somewhere on the baseball field and just don't concede. Ian Desmond, as good as anybody, if looking for another out, he knew he wasn't going to turn the double play. He went Back door to third base, and he got Murphy. Too big of a turn at third, just a heads-up play by the Nats shortstop. Anthony Rendon with the tag. <laughs> That's close.
five variety. So Ian Desmond knowing that that took a little long to develop. So he arm fakes to first, looks to third, strong throw right on the money. And it looked like he got in there. Or did he put his hand on the shoe of Anthony Rendon and not the base? Watch this. Does his hand go on Rendon's shoe and not to the base? I think this will show it, right? <laughs> the shoe is not part of the base. And everybody knows that. I watched Zach Wheeler's warm-up pitches, Kurt. Eight pitches, eight balls. Last time out, he walked six guys. He did not throw a strike. And as a leadoff hitter, that's what you look for before you get up there. Is he throwing strikes in his warm-up pitches? And he didn't throw one. Yeah, walked five in his start before that. A guy with a live arm and some control issues on the year. 44 innings, 41 strikeouts, but 24 walks. Denard Span in the series, two for eight with a walk. Both of those hits Friday night. Nothing unusual. The Nats won the game when he was on base. And a slow tapper to the right side for Murphy. The Nats are hitting 249, six in the league, down to ninth in runs. And Span on a season wide basis, of course, a small sample, just five games, doing okay. The Nats need him hitting a whole lot higher than 236. Kevin Franson back in the lineup today. He's at 289 in 13 starts. See the repertoire for Zach Wheeler. Fastball 94, slider 87, curveball 77, changeup 87. Secondary pitches and putting hitters away have been a problem for Wheeler this year. And I think game plan against a guy that comes off a start where he walks six batters, make him throw strikes for a young pitcher. If you go up there and force the issue early, you can make him relaxed and feel like a part of the ball game. But right now he's thinking, I need to establish a strike zone. If you go out there and help him, now he can take a deep breath and do his thing. Wheeler two weeks away from his 24th birthday. Live arms, 7 and 5 and 17 starts in his big league debut last year. Comes into this one, 1 and 3 with a 453 in 8 starts. And that's outside, 2 and 1. Anthony Rendon, 2 for 7 career against him. And working with a rookie catcher today, Juan Centeno is Zach Wheeler. Anthony Rendon. In what's becoming a bit of an extended skid for him, 10 for his last 56 in this series, a walk and 0 for 7. And the 2 2. Well outside, and Centeno goes scrambling. Is that a slider at 93 miles an hour? <laughs> I couldn't catch that either. Trying to think if he held on a fastball too long, and that was a slider. Rendon takes the walk on a fastball up. Set the defense for the Mets behind Zach Wheeler today. Eric Young Jr. and left Juan Lagares. One of the better defenders in center field. Curtis Granderson in right. Tejada right. Left side. Murphy Duda right side. And Juan Centeno behind the plate. Jason Worth in this series, three for seven, with a walk in an RBI. Nothing unusual that he hits well against the Mets. He's nine for 20 against them this year. And again, Zach Wheeler career, three for 10 with a home run. The homer came last year. Not when the Nats faced Wheeler in the third game of the season in New York. Tanner Roark beat him that day in an 8-2 win by the Nats. And Worth will pop it up a mile high to the right side. Daniel Murphy, second out. Jordan Zimmerman got through the first inning without giving up any runs. So set, uh, 27 games, each of these have given up runs in the first inning. The Nats, by the way, 21 runs for, 42 against, and the minus 21 is the worst figure for any team in baseball. 
Here's Wilson Ramos trying to reverse a trend. Well, maybe they just break out the wiffle ball in the clubhouse and play a few innings in there and come out and feel like the first inning's the third. <laughs> That's a small sample size. That'll change. This team's ready to play baseball every day. It just hasn't happened early for them yet. It's that simple. I don't think there's a whole lot to it. Tyler Moore ready. Just like I said yesterday, you can't ease into a big league game. It'll slap you right across the face if you're not ready to play on a daily basis. I mean, ready to play from the first pitch. I mean, right. the Nats obviously ready to play, but I'm talking about from the very first pitch of the game. You can't sit there and say, oh, I'm going to ease my way into this one, check out the fans, beautiful day, boom, one hop or two, and you're not ready. It happens all the time. I've seen it with a lot of teams. Well, I think Dan Coco brought up a very good point in the top of the first inning. They've gone back and looked and charted and considered and analyzed. And they're basically doing the same thing they've done for the last couple of years. Just one of those crazy seasons when things haven't worked out. Big lead for Rendon all of a sudden. And a big swing by Ramos. Hey, Dan, you have a short thought to wrap up what you were giving us in the top of the inning? Yeah, before Ian Desmond so rudely interrupted me with a tremendous defensive play. Uh, no, just the, essentially what you guys just said, that the Nats are going back. They're not, uh, they're, they're confused by this. They're a little baffled, but they're doing their work. They're going back and looking to make sure that everything's the same as it was in past seasons when these first inning issues weren't a problem. So they, they think that it's just kind of an anomaly, and, and as you said, things will shape out in the end. Well, they're all out here today taking ground balls, taking fly balls. Full on infield. So it's not like they're not preparing, it just hasn't happened. John Byrne thought about that one for quite a while. He hears about it from Wilson Ramos. The Nats get a walk to Rendon. They're gone in the bottom of the first. No score in the rubber game behind Zimmerman against the Mets. He missed one of the better defensive plays of the year, period. And anybody that told you Timos can't fly, well, they were wrong. Look at that effort by Tyler Moore. And then how about the feed by Tyler Moore? Right on the money to Ian Desmond, looking for an out, arm fake. Across his body throws an absolute rocket to Anthony Rendon. To get Daniel Murphy, who is... Who right away lobbying. told his manager, you got to challenge that call. Lobbying for the replay as soon as he was thrown out. <laughs> you know, that's a new one. Guys used to look down at the bag. They'd look down at their cleats. Now they look at the dugout and say, let's challenge it because I was sick. Well, you know what's funny about that, Carb? I mean, we're having fun with it, but last year, Daniel Murphy gets up and gets right in Ed Hickok's face and starts arguing with Ed Hickok. And the way the game has changed in just a year, instead of popping up and getting in the face of the third base umpire and telling him he missed it, he looks toward his manager and waves him out. That's how the game has changed. Hmm. Lucas Duda. The Nats put a big shift on here. I mean, it's almost like, Dad, can you come out here and review this? Instead of, I was safe, Dad. I was safe. I'm not going to argue with the ump. I'm going to call my manager out. 
to ask for a replay. I don't know if I love that. I'm not gonna lie. No, I can tell you I don't like it at all. And I think something's going to have to be done about the numbers of times managers can come out and nothing results. Hey, if you only get two visits to the mound before you have to take a starter out, maybe only a couple of visits to the umpires with or without an appeal. Lucas Duda pretty much a pull hitter. The Nats haven't played so. A one two count. Desmond, the only guy back home at short, and Duda jacks one to the scoreboard. That is off the very top. Might have a play at second base. Worth a long throw, and it just hit the turf and lost all of its juice. And Lucas Duda is now hitting over 330 on the road this year. Well, Jason Worth had to get rid of this quick, flat footed. Because he didn't have time to get anything on the throw. He plays it perfectly. Best thing for the Nats is that stays in the ballpark. An absolute missile off the bat of Lucas Duda. I wonder what the hit speed was on that because that ball was scorched. Duda hustling the second, watching the play all the way, and just makes it. And I, Carp, I think you called it perfectly. It hit the grass and checked up. Didn't gain speed, but really lost speed on the hop. One other thing I noticed at the end of that play. Third base was unoccupied. And Lucas Duda took a look over there after Desmond had tagged him late. And then I saw a couple of other infielders come dashing in. Because on a play like that, when you've got the shift on, somebody has to cover third. Yeah. The center fielder is Juan Lagares. If that game yesterday was a hockey game, he would have been the number one star. He did everything. He's going to advance the runner here. Although Franzen did take a look over to third base and a sharply hit ball. Well, give Duda credit for getting a really good secondary lead and not taking for granted that he could have got thrown out. And Franzen's still thinking about it. Did I have a shot at Duda at third? And I think early on in the game, it's a good play by Franzen to get the out. You go to third right here and don't get it. Now all heck breaks loose, and you got a big, potentially big inning for the Mets. See where he's playing, kind of cheating in. Thought about it. And 104 on the hit speed. Hmm. On the double from Duda. That guy's got some kind of pop. That was fun. Double from Duda. Try it, Carp. It's fun. Double from Duda. D uh, <laughs> double from <laughs> Lucas <on>. Duda. <laughs> <laughs> that ball was swung on and missed. And Ramos in behind that runner and almost got him at third. You know, you see that play, you think it's a foul tip. Ramos knew the ball wasn't hit by Tejada. Scrambled back, got a good carom, and almost got another minute well, third base. Well, I thought this was a foul ball, but apparently not. Duda came down the line. Wilson Ramos with a strong throw. And third base has been the Bermuda Triangle for the Mets here early in this game. Lots of close plays in this one. Real close, but Duda got his hand in there. You're safe when you don't run and reach for the third baseman's shoe. He got the bag instead. No balls, one strike. Right side, runner has to freeze at third, and Tyler Moores had a busy and good day at first base so far. Well, look where Tyler Moore's playing. I mean, he's almost to where second base is. Look at how far over he is. It perfectly placed by the Nats. I mean, if he's playing normal, that's through. Good positioning, good scouting. Number eight man, the catcher, Juan Centeno. He's only had two at bats in one game this year. A strikeout, a walk. He's 24 years of age from Puerto Rico. Got 10 at bats for the Mets with three hits in RBI in four games after a September call up last year. And that ball slammed off the barrier over on the left side. Not a power hitter. In seven years in the minor leagues, he hit two home runs. Yeah, give defensive coach Mark Wiedemeyer a star for having Tyler Moore in the right spot right there to keep this 0 0. Very exciting game out of the gate. That is unreachable for Franzen. And Juan Centeno delivers his second major league RBI. The Mets are on top. Nationals went after the number eight man. He made him pay. Yeah, Franzen up the middle. And the off-speed pitch 
Good effort by Kevin. Just out of reach, and that score is due to one nothing. Zach Wheeler, the pitcher. Oh for ten this year. Four for forty career. With three RBIs, and he just took a home run swing. Target outside edge. That's on the inside corner. Mercedes Benz will track it. Good location. Ran it back just a little bit. That ball pulled to the right side. Franzen on the move. And the Mets are going to the top of the second, but a run after the leadoff double. Mets pitchers now one for 70 on the season. That more often, would you? On our VW Moments in History, the Nats have walked off the Mets six different times. The only frequency more than that in Major League Baseball is the Marlins walking off the Mets seven times. I mean, Pudge, Zimmerman, Desmond, Zimmerman again, even when they break a bat. It just happened time and time again, and Johnny Gomes looking great taking off the helmet there. Bryce Harper checking in. But as usual, it's Ryan Zimmerman, and that's part of the moxie the Nats miss with him out of the lineup. VW with many moments in history as the Nats have walked off the Mets six times. I don't think there's anything better in baseball than walking a team off making them stand out there and celebrating at home plate. Yeah, I get that information. Well, nothing as devastating on the other side is going into the last inning with a lead. The, the only thing better that fans can't see is what ensues in the clubhouse after. And it's basically about a 15 minute party. Not like you clinched a division party, but music's loud. Guys are hooting and hollering. It's a good feeling on the drive home. Ian Desmond in this series, two for seven, a homer, two RBIs and a walk. Seven RBIs in his last five games. Target in. Better get it in there. Yeah, he got it in there. And this is see you later. Over the bullpen. Ian Desmond is hot, folks, and the Nats have tied it up his seventh of the year. Wow. He's getting into some at-bats. 
Feet are slowing down, seeing more pitches. And all of a sudden, Ian Desmond carrying the ball club from an offensive standpoint. And this was absolutely crushed. Head down, knows he got it. Not showing anybody up. And I thought this had a chance to get up in the red loft when he first hit it. Unbelievable. Yeah, a, little breeze, a little breeze coming down half street. Might have stopped it a bit. That was crushed. Crushed. Team leader RBIs now with 25. Here's Tyler Moore. Zach Wheeler just given up only his fourth homer of the year. He keeps the ballpark closed as a rule. Gave up a first inning shot to Brian McCann against the Yankees last time out. He had gone 32 innings without giving up a home run. And he went 31 innings from the middle of August till September 6th last year. And there goes the no hitter in a big way. Tyler Moore sits safely in four out of five games. And he skies one out to right center. Curtis Granderson waiting for that. Let's watch this a few more times. I mean, you talk about just hitting one right on the screws and getting every bit of it. Head down, out front. Listen to it. Now watch it. Yeah, try to catch it. He nice did. Play. He did. <laughs> Jose Lobatone, unofficial helmet taker offer guy. He's getting better at it. Yeah, Jose a little smoother that time than his double take the other night. Kevin Franzen starting his 14th game of the year for the Nats. And as a starter, hitting 289. Might have got quick pitch right there. Hasn't faced Wheeler before. One ball, one strike. And a two hopper to short. Ruben Tejada, two outs. Hit speed 420, no, 106 miles an hour. And Dudas was 104, so Ian Desmond won nothing. Had a nice chat with Ian in Arizona the other day, talking about accepting the day-to-day -day in baseball. Can't get too excited jumping up and down when things are going like they are now. And by the same token, FP, you got to stay relaxed and stay even keel. Not that you're happy about it. When things aren't going well, you just can't ride the roller coaster too much here. And Ian Desmond is one of those guys. You talked numerous times about how he's battled his way through those first month defensive problems and now playing some serious baseball. Well, that's how your teammates tell your character. Are you a basket case when things are going bad? And are you jumping around the clubhouse when things are going good? And Ian Desmond, from what we've seen every day in batting practice on the bench before the game has been the same guy, whether he's struggling or whether he's 10 for his last 10, you couldn't tell the difference how Ian Desmond's going by how he acts. And that's what you want from one of your leaders. We Nate used to, McLeod. We used to call him happy hit guys, Carp. <laughs> they had a couple of hits. They didn't care if, if we won or lost. They'd be chirping in their locker after the game. 2-2. Two -two. Ooh, that's close. And consequently, if the ball club won and they didn't get their hits, they'd be sulking in their locker after the game. And those are the guys you do not want on your team. Nate McLeod, four hits in his last five games. Half of his season total. He'll reach out and spoil that one. Early returns on John Byrne in his whole plate debut as a major league umpire. He is not really wanting to ring anybody up <laughs> on a call third. We got Ramos last inning. Truck told us the pitch track liked that pitch. It was a strike. Nate McLeod struck out swinging. Big time noise by the leadoff guy in the bottom of the second. Ian Desmond getting all of one to left center. It was a no doubter right off the bat. So that's.
Mets are in the Mets run with a solo shot. Hey, bring your group gathering to Nats Park. Hey, the bigger the group, the bigger your discount. Check out the Nats on Nats.com slash groups for more information on all group theme nights as well as additional group experiences and benefits. Or call 202-675-NATS. 202-675-NATS. See red people? There they are. Big crowd. Great crowd. All sun weekend. out, sun behind the clouds at various times. Very comfortable day. It's Pedro Martinez right there. What's up, Pedro? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he is. Top of the third. Jordan Zimmerman back even facing Eric Young here. Who bunted in the air and Tyler Mord made the spectacular play. On the diving catch. Eric Young three for ten career. Against Jordan Zimmerman with a pair of walks. Rendon even with a bag at third against the speedster. He tried to bunt his way on first time. And it's outside 1 1. Target in and up. Got the pop up off it. Out in front of the plate. Tyler Moore. Everybody can hear him call it. Taking charge over there at first base, Tyler Moore. For the achiever in you, PNC Bank. And we check in on Michael A. Taylor from Fort Lauderdale. Six rounder back in 09. Had a chance to visit with him in spring training. Very intelligent, articulate young man who's got speed and power. Coming into this year, 27 minor league home runs, 94 stolen bases, 6 3 2 10. This young man looks like the complete package. Well, he's so ready. Call him up. It's locked in. 10 home runs, 87 RBIs at Potomac last year, doing the job at Double A Harrisburg now. Nothing sweeter than a one pitch out. Daniel Murphy over to the right side. Just as a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to Miller time later in the game, brought to you by Miller Light. Kurt, I'm going to put you on the spot. Again. And if you get it wrong, I, I got it way wrong. <laughs> Pedro Martinez, years with the Mets. What years with the Mets? No, just how many? Oh. I'll say, I know, I know he pitched against the Nats in the early days of Washington. I'll go with my producer who couldn't resist the temptation to whisper in my ear. Oh, he tells you. Yeah, I, would, I thought it was less. I, I saw was, that Pedro Martinez jersey down there. I'm like, I was thinking two years with the Mets. 2005 through 2008. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing I remember about Pedro when he faced our ball club, when the Nats got a couple of guys on base, he had the ability to reach back and, as they say, get that little extra and get out of the inning. Up the middle, Franzen trying to bounce it over to Tyler Moore, and David Wright's going to get himself another infield hit. David Wright has three hits in this series. One's a blooper, and the other two are little bouncers on the infield. I think Kevin Franzen threw that one a couple steps. Maybe before he wanted to because of the speed of David Wright. A lot of people don't realize David Wright runs very well, so Franzen in a hurry on a ball that was on the ground a long time. Yeah, that ball took a lot of time to get out there. I don't think Kevin had a chance. No. Curtis Granderson now. Get into that crazy 3-6-5 double play ending the first inning. When Ian Desmond picked off Daniel Murphy at third base. That's right in there for a strike. Granderson career 0 for 3 with a walk against Jordan Zimmerman. And so far, and of course, as we say, it is a small sample size, only about six weeks or so. Granderson in the opening series of the year against the Nets went two for 13. Hasn't gotten much better for him since batting a buck 88. And Jordan's going to bust it right in by his hands. Heater's been good. 94, 96. 
thrown a lot of them. Usually throws it 67% of the time today. So far, 71. That sharply hit in the right field. So the Mets are getting their share of base hits. Five hits in three innings now. Plus a walk in the first. And it'll be up to Lucas Duda, who came within about two feet of homering here. Last time he hit it right near the top of the 15 foot scoreboard in right center. Only Duda's fourth hit in 19 career at bats against Jordan Zimmerman. Shift not as dramatic this time. Franzen is in short right field. And Jordan steals a strike with a breaking ball. This time Desmond up the middle of the shortstop side. And Rendon over at third base because of the base runner David Wright. Can't just give him third. Ooh, Zimmerman gets the call up a, just under the ceiling of the strike zone. Let's check it on the Nissan pitch track. Boy, Wilson Ramos's glove is making a loud noise today on the fastball from Jordan Zimmerman. That tells me a couple of things. Obviously, the velocity mid 90s, but he is really staying through the pitch to where it's every bit of 95 when it gets to the plate. A lot of late life in the heater from Jordan here today. That deep thud in the catcher's glove. 0 2 pitch. Ramos wanted that ball down and away. It was up but tailing away. That's about all Duda could do with it. Braves underway in St. Louis. They're 22 and 19. The Nats are 22 and 20. And the Marlins in a virtual tie with Washington at 23 and 21. They're at San Francisco later. Lucas Duda has been tough with men on base. Off of that change up away, maybe a try fastball in to where it's either a ball off the plate in or you're shaving the inside corner. Dude, his numbers per at bats the last two years pretty strong. And hit that ball hard. Franz into Anita, throw him out. Duda, 30 homers in the last two years in just over 700 at bats. But the Nats get him there to keep this a 1 1 game. And paddle boat out on the tidal basin today. So great to see the Washington Monument reopened just this past week, accepting visitors again. That's a great thing for our city. Almost as big as dollar hot dogs tomorrow night against the Reds at 7.05. It's all presented by Hatfield. Available for purchase at all hot dog stands in additional select locations till the start of the sixth inning. We want things to settle down for you before you go home. 202 675.
Nets for game tickets or nationals.com. Bottom of the third, Jordan Zimmerman leads off. Four hits in 11 at bats this year. That's 364 in the box right now. Yeah, he's in the early uh, silver slugger race with Adam Wainwright and a couple of other pitchers who are swinging it well. Big cut on a breaking ball that ended up way outside. Third K for Zach Wheeler. Let's go inside the numbers with STG Inc. When either Denard Spann or Anthony Rendon have a hit, the Nats are 22 and 13. 0 and 7 when neither gets a base hit. And they're 22 and 20 when both are in the lineup. And when one of the two gets a hit, I, I know I know where you're going there because that's the entire season. Killing record. myself over here. Just let me enjoy it. When one of them gets a hit, the Nats still win, 22 and 13. So that means in every game this year, the Nats have won at least Span or Rendon if it's safely. They're 0 for 1 with a walk today. Span a ground ball. Rendon a base on balls after that in the first. 0 2 pitch. Zach Wheeler goes up and away. Well, Denard's a tinker with his swing, and he's always trying new things, new stances, new approaches. And when he finds that one that works, you know, that's going to be a comfort to him because. You can just stick with it. We've seen him do two or three different things already this year. Freddie Freeman just homered with two outs in the top of the first. And the Braves have an early run at St. Louis. Kind of interesting that Freddie Freeman doesn't appear on any of the stat sheets in the top 10 in the National League. These days, because he's got nobody around him doing much of anything other than striking out. One ball and two strikes to spin. And a bouncer by the mound, a race to the bag, and he will be out as Ruben Tejada got to it, got plenty on the throw. This is where you do the dance in the dugout. Randy Nord to the phone. Here comes Matt Williams to turn the umpire. We'll see. It's just funny to me to watch. As soon as there's a close play, I look at the dugout. Randy Nor went down the steps to the phone. They're looking at the replay as we show you the replay. And it looks like they might have got him. Yep. And I don't think Matt Williams is going to come out and even talk. Well, too late now. Rendon is in the box. So Lance Barrett, yeah, he was out. Rendon goes up ripping, took a pretty good cut. And Chopper, third base side, chance for a hit. David Wright plays it well, but Rendon beats it, and he needed that. On the first game of May at Philadelphia, Anthony Rendon was hitting 316. Batting average down in the 260s before that base hit. Well, you look at the speed of Rendon. Nice play by David Wright. I mean, to make it this close, tip your cap to Wright, but Rendon... I think calling himself safe as he crosses the base or was he just getting his hands out of the way? <laughs> Either way, it was like a sprinter across the finish line and it'll take the infield knock. Keeping an inning alive to get Jason Worth to the plate. A Mets nemesis this year with nine hits. I mean, based on that last stat we just showed about Span and Rendon. If Span was safe, the game would be over and I would just go home because. We are honored. We are honored in our booth. And he's a man of few words. Don't know if we'll get him to talk at all. But Adam LaRoche has joined us upstairs. Just kind of kidding the other day in Arizona. FP, you invited him up here, right? I did. Here he is. 2-0. Oh. 
That is a fastball on the inside edge. And the count's two and one. Pretty high up, huh? There he is. <laughs> what do you think? Duck Dynasty just sat down next to me. He's always wanted to see this. He means, of course, you and I working. Yes. And we're going into the Jason Worth at bat here with a count of two balls and one strike. The Nats even on the Desmond home run. And a front door breaking ball stays inside three and one. How you feeling? Adam says pretty good. We'll get a we'll get a headset on him and get a comment or two here. I kind of like the silent Bob routine. Just leave him sit here. We'll talk to him without a headset on. Three and one to Worth. Outfield plays him straight away. And a front door breaking ball again, and Jason slammed that one right off his foot. Testing one, two, three. Can you hear us? Yeah, you got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got right. you, Adam. We live. Hey, how's how's the leg? I know you've been uh, the first week or so. It's a lot of rest, right? Since you went on the DL a week ago in Oakland. It's feeling better. It's feeling a lot better. Got to get on the treadmill today, move around a little bit. I'm uh, I'm hopeful for Sunday. I think that's when I'm eligible to come off. So that, that's the day I'm shooting for. In an old stomping ground of yours, PNC Park. Yeah, that's right. Jason Ward's going to have to walk this one off a little bit. That one really came straight down, slammed him on the foot, and then went rifling up the third baseline. I'm going to check it out one more time. Where to get him? Oof. Right on the top of the foot, lower ankle. Uh, he's all right. Those don't hurt. Tape an aspirin to it. <laughs> Those don't hurt. <laughs> 3-2, and on the move is the base runner Rendon. Deep short, dropped by Tejada. Thus, he loses any chance to make a throw. And the Nats, with Wilson Ramos coming in, have two on, two out. All right, let's go to the official score, Adam LaRoche. Hit or an error right there? Who oh, you got? Hit. Come on now, I'm a hitter. Well, I'm you saying. You get a pitcher up here, and it's, that's a different story. Well, the fact that Rendon was running on the play, now the force is off at second base, so the official score has to say, would he have thrown all the way across to get Jason Worth? And I say no. He must have been a hitter, too, because we can justify anything, can't we? Yes, absolutely. That's a hit every time. They called it an error. Yeah, they just called it an error. So you are right. officially 0 for 1 as a broadcaster. What, what do we know? Thank you. Hey, where is the official score, by the way? I'd like One to level him. below it. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 I, am I allowed down no. there? No. One level below is no. probably not during no. the game. No. I'm going to say I'm no. kidding. He does a great job. Yes, he does. As far as you know. Here's Ramos. Low and away to the big man who was called out on strikes first time. Zach Wheeler got a breaking ball to the outside corner to get him looking, ending the first inning. So you guys watch the TV. You don't necessarily watch... Live. But no, we watch the game, and then once he starts the pitch, you go to the monitor to see where the pitch is located. But okay. we're looking out here initially, and Ian Desmond almost got scorched with a line drive in the on-deck circle right there. Right over the top of his helmet. When this ballpark first opened, that screen didn't go over that far. That could have been dangerous for somebody in the seats, and thank goodness Ian's okay. So you look out here for positioning. You see where guys are at. You watch base runners to see if they're leading, if they're thinking about going. And then as soon as the pitch is thrown, you kind of roll over here okay. to the monitor to see the location of the pitch, what the pitch was, and if it was hanging or not. 1-1 one, one to Ramos. And a shot to left center. It'll plug the gap. Home is Rendon. Worth the round third. He will score. The Nets on top by two. As Ramos delivers with two outs. Got a little rally the Rose going up here. Oh, man, that's, that's a good view up here on a double in the gap, isn't it? You can tell right away, right? Oh, my gosh. And now you go to the monitor and you check out the pitch, and we're going to see where this pitch was. Go ahead. That's a, that's a backup spinning cement mixer slider, isn't it? Yep. Split the gap. Jason Worth on the backside. Bob Henley with a good send right there. Two outs. Not a problem. Worth with a big head of steam and a lot of hair. <laughs> and he scores easily. And the foot's okay. And the Buffalo starting to heat up. The hand looks like it's getting a little bit stronger. Oh, it's fun to watch, man. You guys see when he gets rolling. It is, it is something else. Here's Ian Desmond. And he's locked in at the moment. Fastball at the letters for a strike. This is something you probably haven't done a lot in your career. You keep score ever? You know how to keep score? No, I don't. What is it? The scorecard. 
when you put double two RBIs and then you score the two runners. Wow. It's great. How about how about his uh, homer? No doubter. That one's off the end of the bat, popped up to the right side. Murphy will let it go for Lucas Duda, the Nats, because of the error call, which could be changed later. Pick up a couple of runs. 3-1, Washington. Day. It's our DynCorp International Troop Recognition. Saluting our wounded warriors, families, everybody connected with the military who comes to the ballpark and visits with us on a daily basis. We serve today for a better tomorrow at DynCorp International. Bob Carpenter, FP Santangelo, Dan Coco downstairs, and our newest analyst, at least for a little while, Adam LaRoche joining us. So, Adam, we talked about the kind of rest you've been on for the first week or so. What can you do now, and uh, what's ahead for you the next couple of days with that quad? Well, finally today I was able to start moving more. Uh, yesterday, got in the pool. We've got a we've got a whirlpool down there with the treadmill on the bottom, which is great for, for some therapy and rehab. So I get to get on that a little bit, and then today on the treadmill, I'm hoping tomorrow get out on the field, take some ground balls, and, and start moving around a little bit. So surprisingly, it feels really good. I gave it five or six days of, of pretty much solid rest uh, try to get that thing to heal up and uh, feel it feels great any bet work during this time or have you yeah been no no I've been able to hit a lot okay great good. yeah never it never affected me swinging so I can get down there and take some swings in the cage yeah and by the way two you were good for two runs and you're going nowhere <laughs> I, as so, long as it takes yeah. just stay up here I'll stick around same seats you know I wanted I really wanted to get up here and see if, if this was as easy as you guys made it look um, and, and check the view out. As a player, uh, hard to explain, but you don't ever get really this perspective. Um. That ball hit hard by Juan Lagares. And Denard Spann will run it down at the edge of the outfield track. Well, the one thing we do see up here is routes to balls in the outfield very well. And for a couple of years now, I've seen Denard Spann take some of the cleanest routes I've ever seen a center fielder take. And you see it firsthand every day. But look at it right here. I mean, this is what we see every day. I do. I get to see it. You, you really don't get to appreciate how much ground they cover uh, like you guys do up here with this view. I mean, it looks like it looks twice as big from up here as it does ground level. So, you know, I get to see them running, but up here you can really see them closing that gap. That's impressive. That's why I know I'll never be an outfielder. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Ruben Tejada. Jordan Zimmerman, whether it's downstairs or upstairs, has a crackling fastball going today. Tejada. Late on a swing first time, grounded out to Tyler Moore, covering first base. And the Nats had the infield in. So it looks pretty easy from up here. And the one thing as a former player you have to remind yourself every day is how hard the game was. That's right. And when you weren't good like <laughs> I was, it's easy to remind yourself of that. Oh, that's right. Owen 2 in a fastball. 
Got Tejada's feet moving around. Jordan Zimmerman, first three innings, 47 pitches, 33 strikes. He's gone 16, 15, and 16 with his innings and his pitches so far today. 1 2 didn't miss by much upstairs. It's one of my favorite pitchers to play behind right here. And you guys see why. I mean, it's just here it is, hit it, here it is, and rock and fire. Just keep pounding the zone with a fastball, and you wouldn't know if he's throwing a perfect game or he's getting shelled. No, you gotta love it. Not afraid of anybody. And a ball hit pretty well to left. Going back, Nate McClough. And he will have his on the edge of the track for the second out. Keeping it in the yard. And Adam, FP and I talk about this all the time. This ballpark's starting to play a little smaller than it was a month ago, right? A little bit. It typically does. It needs to uh, needs to heat up a little more around here. Well, that ball Egan <laughs> hit in July might have got to the red loft. Yeah, there's no doubt. There, there's no doubt. I and mean, we've we've actually hit a couple last couple days to the track that look like they're gone, at least from dugout, and, and um, needed to warm up just a little more. I'm sure, the pitchers don't want to hear that, but. No, but you're a hitter, and that's a perspective we have. You want the ballpark to play small, especially a guy with a pop like you have. 2-0 and now to the catcher, Juan Centeno, who came up with two outs, and Duda at third base two innings ago and got that base hit that put the Mets on top. His second big league RBI. How about Timo's play in the first inning? How about that? We got, the, we got the right guy By the way, today, don't we? We, we, we've got, we got something for you on that shortly. All right. 3-0. and I mean, I don't think I a lot of people guy. realize how good he is defensively over there. And you're a former Gold Glove winner. You got to appreciate that. No, I do. And, and again, like anything, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. So he's getting some consistent time over there. And you got to get better. You know, I was listening to you guys yesterday, and you were talking about as a starter, his numbers at the plate, uh, three something. That's yeah. really impressive. And it goes to show you how hard pinch hitting is. Three and two now as Zimmerman battles back to fill the count. Even his numbers overall, and I was looking the other day in 366 at bat, 17 home run, 56 RBI, and that's spread out. Right. There's a lot of pinch hits in there. There's right. a lot of starts once a week. Bouncing ball left side, Ian Desmond. It's a one, two, three for Jordan Zimmerman. And when we come back for the bottom of the fourth, Tyler Moore will lead off, and Adam LaRoche will analyze one of the best plays of the year as he comes forward. on today. Keep an eye on the guy in fifth place. This not exactly like the Preakness yesterday. They got the Johnny Holiday wear on. I like it. Evidently. William Howard Taft unable to close it down. And Abraham Lincoln. That's at least two in a row for eight. We'll All right. Here's Tyler that. Moore. We'll have to review that. Yeah, let's turn the umpire toward the dugout and we'll find out in about a week. Tyler Moore, <laughs> Adam LaRoche made that fantastic play. And you don't get to see our Exmo up here a whole lot, but you're going to see some interesting views of what he did. What do you got? Analyze it. Let's go. Uh, it's selling out. 
That's selling out right there, plain and simple. Not worried about your your own well-being and uh, taking care of that pitcher. So that, that's awesome. And plus the first batter of the game, like ready to rock and roll from the first pitch. I love that. I love seeing that. I and mean, that's just, that's instinct right there. Fastball in there to Tyler, who flagged to right first time up. Were you a feet first slide guy? No, head first everywhere, even home. Only uh, time on I defense, defensively, in the outfield. I never, I never could understand the feet first slide. And guys doing are successful with it, but. But J-Dub does it a lot in right field. He does. I think when you're, when you're going up against the wall or something, but I, I could never figure it out. Nope. I was a diver. And a veteran diver because. So in other words, you would time ball so yes. you could dive for him. Get, in, in center field, I would play on the wrong side of second base, get a bad jump, and then dive, and that's how you make it. Oh, I, love I love you admit to that. Yes. Good for you. Absolutely. How else do you get on TV? <laughs> so pretty good. Fastball work by Zach Wheeler there under the hands of Tyler Moore. Here's Kevin Franzen and Nate McLeod. And Adam, you've played alongside Franzen now regularly for a month and a half or so. What has this guy brought to this ball club and to the clubhouse? Well, he's brought fog machines and, uh, and, and doubles down the line. Stay fair. Just foul into the corner. Yeah, he brought a laser light show and fog machines into the clubhouse after wins. So, <laughs> other than that, the ultimate utility guy plays anywhere and never complains. You gotta love him. So, when you guys win a game, there's a fogger, laser lights. Would you walk up into the clubhouse? Uh, there is. There is. It's outstanding. Yeah, it's it's something to see. Wow. Uh, How long before his beard catches yours is the better question. Uh, well, I'm not gonna shave, so I don't know if his depends how fast it grows. His is more of the bushy variety. It doesn't look like it has any real length to it. Yours is longer. That ball is well hit out to left center. Lagaris after it, and he will catch it up against the wall. Franzen making a bid for his second home run of the week and the season. Two outs. I mean, he just gives you a good A-B every single time up. I mean, he's going to fight, he's going to scrap, he's going to claw, and... I'm learning very quickly that it's hard to get a ball over Juan Lagares' head. We just talked about Denard Spann's route. I mean, this guy covers as much ground as anybody I've seen in baseball, and he's got a cannon to go with it. That might be an example of what you were saying. When it warms up, that ball might get off the wall or even better. I think it goes. I really do. I think it's a big difference here with, with some hot weather. Speaking of good at-bats, I don't care what his numbers say. This guy right here puts up some big league at-bats. We were talking about yesterday. Nate McLeod, the bouncer, unfortunately for him, right to the bag for Lucas Duda. The Nats go 1-2-3, bottom of the fourth. Zach Wheeler about to lead off a 3-1 Washington lead. Baseball on Masson brought to you by your local DC area 
Land Rover retailers. Visit DCAreaLandRover.com for special lease and finance offers. And by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. Wilson Ramos delivered a big two-run double. Worth scored. Rendon scored. And we go to the top of the fifth now. Jordan Zimmerman averaging right around 15 pitches per inning. 61 pitches, 40 strikes. Who's got the nastiest stuff on the infield when you're catching throws across? Anthony. Rendon? Yeah. With that Anthony. sidearm whip, huh? And I, can't, I cannot stop it. I've told him 100 times he's going he's gonna to either break my glove or hit me in the mouth. Sometimes he throws it 100 miles an hour from 20 feet. From second, right? From second. Base. I always see you catch it and give him that little look like, seriously, dude? I, I you do. You take a little it, off that? It doesn't register. You can't, you, it's, <laughs> it's all or nothing. Which is fine. If he gets it over there in the vicinity, then, then I'm good with it. Zach Wheeler. But that's a luxury that I had with David Segui in Montreal to where he was so good with the glove if for whatever reason I was playing third on a given day I knew I just had to get it in a little circle over there and he had me so now as an infielder you relax and you end up making better throws because you know you got a guy like you over there that's going to pick you up if you falter. Well I appreciate that and that's, uh, that's one of my favorite things about that position. This is interesting. Jordan Zimmerman first strikeout today. Top of the fifth inning. So that's $37 to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health. It happens every time a net pitcher strikes out a hitter. Thanks to our D.C. area Toyota dealers. Carp, you call the game. Adam and I are just going to sit here and talk baseball. <laughs> Feel free to interrupt us for the game once in a while. We're just hey, going to check. I'm just here to keep this madhouse together. You guys have at it. So a guy like Eric Young Jr. comes up, maybe a few steps in. What do you do at first? Well, I don't know that I can give all that away. Middle of the season. How I about a speed guy? A seconds. speed guy at the plate. <laughs> no, you know what? In general, I communicate with the second baseman all the time. Guys that can bunt. And, and for the most part, you know, I've talked to a lot of bunners, and I don't know that it matters where the first baseman plays. I think a, a, a bunner, the, the direction he's looking to go, he's more concerned about the second baseman than he is the first baseman. So if he pushes it, he hits it in the right spot. The only way to get that out is for that second baseman to charge and get it in foot. So you tell the second baseman, I'm going to the bag, it's yours? I don't want them to hesitate. I don't want them to have to, to wonder which direction I'm going. They know they're going for the ball right out of the gate. So if they can get that extra jump, that's when we've had some success on, you know, picking up the ball in a glove flip or, or, you know, getting out of the hand, whatever it is. But I feel like we do a great job with guys not butting that direction. And, and obviously you can't go to third because we got Zim and, and Anthony over there that, that eat it up. And the, the philosophy behind that is, is if you do go for the bunt and get it, the fast runner is going to beat the pitcher to the bag, so it's useless for you to go get the ball. You just go to the base and hope either the pitcher gets it or the second baseman, right? It really is. And, and for, for my first few years, I used to play in and, and think that we could get it and flip to the pitcher, and I just, after seeing it enough, that it, it never works out. So if I can get the ball and tag the base or tag the runner, great. Other than that, I want my second baseman to take it. Carp, what's going on over there? How are you doing? Two balls and two strikes on Eric Young. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I'm sure our fans are too. Slow roll the right side, and Kevin Franzen knows he has to make the exchange quickly, and he does. And subtly now, after the two hits back in the third, Jordan Zimmerman's retired six consecutive Mets. Well, you give a pitcher like Jordan Zimmerman a lead, they turn into a different guy. The upper echelon guys, the gamers as I call them on the mound, they get that lead and they figure, that's all I need. This game's over. I'm going to turn into my own closer. Uh, no question. And I, I've seen it over and over, really, from a lot of our starters. But Jordan, I mean, you talk about a bulldog. Uh, again, no uh, no expression on his face. You can't tell if he's, if he's getting hit around or got a no-hitter going. And we love it. Adam, uh, you and Ryan Zimmerman remind me of each other a little bit because your personalities, you guys kind of low-key it, but you're quiet leaders with the ball club and in the clubhouse. How much have you talked to him during his downtime here, and how's Ryan doing? Uh, we talk quite a bit. Uh, he, Ryan's great. Ryan, Ryan's the same guy all the time. I know it kills him to not be out here. Um, the hand injuries are the worst. I mean, he can't do anything. He can't He can't throw. He can't swing. Uh, you sit around and, and do what I just saw him doing. He's, he's just sitting down there flipping a the ball and, and being a cheerleader. So I know it's frustrating. Uh, he's getting closer, and, and everybody knows we need him in the middle of that lineup. Two balls, one strike to the locked-in Daniel Murphy. 
who in this series is four for ten with a pair of walks. Line drives all over the yard from this guy. Do you think Worth was going to catch his ball Friday night? Ooh, I, I, I'm glad he did. <laughs> that was close. I'm glad he did. That was that was that made me nervous. How, how tall is that fence? Because it didn't look like he had to jump hardly at all, did right? it? Right. The bullpen, it's only about six feet. So the top of his cap would be right at the top of that. Okay. And then out in center, it's about eight feet there, ten feet in left center. So it's it's a quirky ballpark to a certain extent, but not so that it gets silly. There's a ball right at Jason Worth. Well, if he's 6'2", he'd still be playing. <laughs> and a 1-2-3, top of the fifth. We're enjoying Adam LaRoche in the booth today. One Nats heading to the bottom of the fifth inning. Jordan Zimmerman doing his thing. 74 pitches, 49 strikes. But Ian Desmond, Wilson Ramos bringing the big time lumber here today. And this one, a no doubter. And over the bullpen. Guy made a great catch on that going back. Ian Desmond, Jose Lobatone. Helmet taker off for guy when Ian Desmond hits one. And the Buffalo checking in. Shopping at the gap. A big two out knock. That scores Anthony Rendon. Jason Worth to make it. Three to one, and there's the Buffalo signing, Adam. I know you missed that. I do, and I'll tell you what, I gotta get I gotta get back out there because Desi and I have a friendly bet every year on most home runs, and, and he's uh <laughs> he's extending that gap. I yeah, like he's it. two ahead of you now. I told him yesterday I said get a big lead because I'm coming, I'm coming strong. <laughs> Jordan Zimmerman the hitter. I was gonna ask you about your first part of the season. I know you're tired of talking about it over the years, but the slow starts and all that. I wouldn't ask you this while you're going well, but now that you're on the DL and you're shut down, <laughs> what's been the difference for you this year? Is there anything you can put your finger on? Gosh, the only thing I, you know, the, the last couple of weeks of spring training, I, I really worked hard on being as soft with that front side and, and mm -hmm. keeping the, the head as still as I possibly could. I was able to go down. I was able to go down the minor league side uh, a couple times and get, you know, seven, eight at-bats in a row and, and try to work on that. And I think that's a big part of it. I think I, I get ahead of myself. I, I start trying to hit the ball right out of the hand instead of seeing it first and, and just getting jumpy. It's natural. Jordan Zimmerman checking in with his fifth base hit of the year. He's now five for 13. But he's just an athlete. I mean, he always gives you a good at-bat, moves runners, and when he doesn't move runners, he does this. You know who's a sneaky good hitter is Doug Fister. He can hit a little bit? He can hit. He was a first baseman at Fresno State, oh, and I've watched his batting practice. He took some good hacks in Arizona. All right. Good to have him back. Yeah, absolutely. Here's Denard Spann. A couple of ground balls today. And another one. It gets through. And Jordan Zimmerman going to third. Denard thinking about two. Stand-up double. And the Nets are in business here in the fifth inning. Rally LaRoche. That's all I got to say. Hey, I, may, I might be more productive up here than on the field, huh? <laughs> well, right now you are. I'll tell you what, I couldn't do this. I, I've worked the, I don't see this again. 
Oh, that's pretty. I yeah. mean, last year, Adam, and you know this better than anybody, when Denard Spam was locked in late, the Nationals were tough to beat. You guys, I mean, he goes, you go. I know that's a cliche for a leadoff hitter, but I feel like with you guys, it's absolutely true. No, you know how important that is, really, for any team. Your leadoff guy is crucial. They're getting the most at-bats uh, and, and setting the table. So, again, yeah, when he's rolling, we're scoring a lot of runs. We need him. Uh, we need him on there. Terry Collins bringing his infield in. Can't afford to get much further behind. And Anthony Rendon does a good job of laying off a front door breaking ball. Maybe this will get Rendon going. As I mentioned, coming into this game, 10 for 56. He's walked. Then he got that infield hit that he beat out. Kept that inning alive. I don't know that I'd bring my infield this far in if I was Terry Collins. Just for the fact that you have your pitcher at third base and with nobody out, I don't know that you go contact play and take a risk of your pitcher getting hurt here. So he's, he is playing the middle halfway, but the corners are in. And I would think Matt Williams would wait till one out before he puts the contact play on, but we'll see how it plays out. What a rip by Rendon. Now, you always assume here as, as an infielder that they're probably not going to go. I mean, you've got to be ready for it, but especially pitcher running, I agree. I think you could play double play depth and, and still have time. You know, right in for the possible bunt. I don't think Rendon's bunting in a 2-1 count. If I was David Wright, I'd give myself a couple steps here and maybe even do it at first base, too. Rendon takes a fastball that misses. Wheeler has pounded him inside on three pitches in this A-B. He's taken them all. I want to go on the record here and say this guy's going to win at least one batting title before this is over. I like it. It's one of the most impressive junctures I've ever seen. I don't doubt that a bit. And after this pitch, maybe you can tell us why. Why? The, the calmness about him, uh, you just don't see it. I mean, whether it's whether it's first up bat with nobody on or, or bases loaded and they're, you know, late in the ball game, the guy puts up consistent at bats. Uh, he's never in a rush. Um, just just has a knack for slowing the game down and makes it look way way easier than it is. Pretty it's quick, for, pretty quick from A to B with the hands too. Oh, lightning, lightning quick! Uh, you guys have seen how far he can hit some balls. And yeah, he's an all-around hitter. Going to be that way for a long time. That's Dan Worthen, the Mets pitching coach. So interesting today because we talked about the control problems Wheeler had had. Six his last start, five before that. Only two today, but both times Rendon setting the table for Worth and Ramos. So if you're Jason Worth here, what's your game plan as you look at the? STG numbers, Zach Wheeler's walks per nine innings. A guy that's young and still trying to establish a strike zone, especially with his secondary pitches. But if you're Jason Worth walking up here right now, what are you looking for? Well, you can get greedy right here. This is this is what they call keyhole in a pitcher, and he's looking for something up, out over the plate, and something to hit a long way. 3-1 ball game. Nats with a chance to bust it open here, fifth inning. And getting the call, Wheeler, on the inside corner from the rookie umpire, John Byrne. A pretty good pitch by Wheeler. I mean, if you're Jason Worth, you're looking for something right down the middle that you can drive. This is a sinker, two-seamer to a corner. Might have been a little off the plate. You definitely don't want that 0-0 with the bases loaded. Looked like ball one on the Mercedes-Benz pitch track. Worth gets jammed into short center field. Who's going to take it? Murphy grabs it, throws it right back in on the fly to Juan Centeno, the catcher, one out. Same pitch, got in on him a little bit. He is frustrated with that. That's a pretty good play right here. Tougher play on the road, right? That's a really good play, yeah. With the fans cheering, because you really can't hear each other communicating on that. That's right. you got three guys. Converging right there. Not sure who's going to take it. And hung in there. Unfortunately, made the catch. And Jason, we're frustrated. Here's Wilson Ramos, who delivered a 2-1 double last time up. Another ball in on his hands. Wheeler pounding guys inside right now here in the fifth inning while in trouble. Well, you have to do that with Wilson because he's so good with runners in scoring position because he stays inside the ball. He lets the ball travel and get deep. He uses the whole field. So 
in these situations, pitchers want you to hit the ball to a corner. They're trying to get a ground ball to third, and they're trying to get you to roll over on something. So I wouldn't be surprised if Wheeler stays in this whole sequence. Base hit down the left field line. Ramos has a four RBI day. Then Ants on top five to one. Tried to get inside on him again. And Wilson Ramos today has tripled his season RBI total. You know he can't ever leave now. <laughs> Seriously. Well, I mean. I'm not going anywhere. Good. This is, this is too fun. We're loving it. And you're worth some runs, so that's even better. I mean, talk about how he stays inside this. If you come around it, you pull a foul. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I don't know if he's sitting in there or not. Can't read his mind. But when you see a guy living in there and he threw four or five pitches in a row in there, and they just sat on it. That's a great piece of hitting. I mean, he saw what Wheeler did to Jason Worth. And you see the kids with the Buffalo sign. Now the dude's everywhere. Vamos, Ramos. <laughs> But, yeah, as an on-deck hitter, you see what they're doing to the guy in front of you, and if they're pounding him in, well, maybe your game plan changes accordingly. Still only one out in the inning. Ian Desmond won for two with a home run. I always thought it was dangerous in RBI situations to look in. But I was never an RBI guy like you were. No, no, you are. It, it can be. But, again, you're, you're on deck. You're watching. You know, Willie's on deck. He saw what he did to Jason uh, and, and had some success there, so. He's probably going back in. Desmond takes the 0-2 breaker in the dirt. And let me tell you, that's not an easy pitch to hit. That, that's 94 miles an hour and, and boring in. I've faced this guy enough. He's got some action on that ball. It can be tough. It seems like the game has slowed down for Ian the last week or so. His feet are slower at the plate. Even kind of has a swagger back at shortstop. Yep, yep, you can see it. He's letting it eat across the infield, letting the throw go. Saw it a little bit in Arizona, especially offensively. He's, he's starting to feel really good. And a 1-2 and a big cut. He wants that one back. And now he got a fight, got his pitch, fouled it off. And usually, as a major league hitter, you'll get one pitch per at-bat that you should do something with. That might have been a little high, but definitely something he could drive. A little bit. A little, little bit up. That's one that out of the hand looks great. And, and you start your swing, and it just keeps rising. Jay Uris Familia for the Mets. Middle of the ball game. The Nats by four. Still only one out. And a one-two to Desmond with a target away. Broken bat up the middle. Mets try to turn two. Tejada and Murphy able to do the 6-4-3. But Wilson Ramos has driven in four today. As we move to the six, Zimmerman pitching well. And the Buffalo working with him in more ways than one.
Well, the dive of Tyler Moore, the power of Ian Desmond, the RBI touch of Wilson Ramos, and then Jordan Zimmerman on the mound holding it all together. Thursday, June 5th, Nats Phillies, 4 o'clock. After the game, the Nats live free postgame concert series kicks off with the plain white tees presented by Travel Channel. Two-time Grammy Award winners, Platinum Hits, Hey There, Delilah, and Rhythm of Love. It's free with your June 5th Nationals game ticket. 202-675-NATS or visit nationals.com slash Nats Live. What was that second song again? The Rhythm of Love. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how are, your, how are your buddy's third date doing? Good. Been in touch with them lately. Oh, they, were yeah. the, they were on the field here last year, did a wonderful concert. Yeah, I've talked to Mac once in a while. Unfortunately, they can't come back. There's uh, there's something going on with the, the they're playing close to here and, and couldn't have two shows in the same city. So Got it. Well, we don't have enough innings left in this game to ask Adam about all of his musician friends. Oh, he, the guy knows everybody. That's David Wright. He's had an interesting series. David Wright has four hits against the Nats, two bloops now, and two infield hits. So the good ones get them no matter how they need to to keep things afloat. And David Wright's two for two with a walk today. So the Mets box score. Back in the second inning, RBI by Juan Centeno, the catcher. Nats tried to get him with two outs and a runner at third. He made him pay, but that's their only RBI today. But David Wright's on for the third time, and here comes Curtis Granderson. A lot of talks about all the shifts in baseball now and how it's harder to get hits for guys when they have the shift. You're a guy that's... Basically had it every time you've come up since mm -hmm. I've seen you your thoughts on when you step to the plate and You see everybody on the right side No, I think a lot of time what make what makes the shift effective is just the What it does mentally to a hitter I think if you're a hitter that goes in there and worries about where guys are playing then the shift can be effective um, And not just by putting up, you know putting the ball in the play to the right side But just mentally maybe trying to go that way maybe trying to force it that way instead of just you know letting it go um, and, and early on, I tried to do that. I'd see a big hole over there and, and you know, end up, it'd be worse. I'd end up hitting, a, you know, a 10 hopper to the first baseman. So if you can kind of get that out of your mind, yeah, you're going to get some t hits taken away. But again, there's a big hole over there. And, you know, I don't, I, I don't like, I don't like when teams do it with guys in scoring position. I, I feel like it's too easy to bleed a ball that way. 0-2 Zimmerman to Granderson. So your thought process is now you're used to it. It doesn't affect you where maybe early on it did. It doesn't. And, and I say that, and a lot of times it depends on the pitcher. If I know it's a guy that's that's maybe sinking the ball a lot or, or going to stay away the whole time, yeah, maybe I lean out a little more and try to shoot something that way. And, and again, it depends on the score. Uh, if we've got guys on base, who's pitching? There's a lot of factors there. But I've never been a huge fan of it, and, and not just as a hitter, but, you know, on the defensive side. Um, yeah, I, I don't like the full blown shift. I know we do it occasionally, uh, and, and it can pay off. But I don't know. I'd be curious to see numbers over time on that, uh, on how much it works and, and doesn't. Adam LaRoche with us here, top of the sixth inning. David Wright aboard, leading off, and Granderson takes another one that misses just inside. Two balls, two strikes. The last pitch. A change up right there at 87 and <clears throat> just missed. On the Nissan pitch track. Curtis Granderson, tough guy to double up, hasn't hit into one this year, at least on the ground. And a 2 2. Wow. It's a good pitch. Outside corner, not available either. Well, I talked about this earlier, Adam, and maybe you can add on to it. A rookie umpire, John Byrne, is his first game back there. And not talking about him specifically because you're a player, but I've found it. With younger umpires, they have trouble ringing up guys on call third strikes. No, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because one thing I've, I've come to the conclusion over the years is that it must be a lot harder back there than we think it is. You know, when you're watching a game or, or even in and at bat or watching from first base and you see some calls that you feel like should go the other way, it just must be really, really hard to be consistent back there and and, and call it the way we feel like it should be called. So. Now this is his first time calling balls and strikes at the big league level. Doing a good job. Debuted at second base Friday night. Now the plot thickens here in the sixth inning with Lucas Duda coming in. Hit a ball right off the top of the scoreboard back in the second. Grounded out in the third. And Zimmerman misses away. And you can't win on a close pitch. Somebody, somebody from either side is going to yell at you. So not, not real easy on those guys. Guys, keep going. You're, you're going to get some calls. 
I mean, you're, you're earning it right now. When you come back, umpires are listening, so keep pumping them up. <laughs> you get all the more money. <laughs> uh, maybe where you're going. maybe it you're takes right. your, your daily outside strike that's four inches off the plate away. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I talk I'm, about I'm glad right you here. noticed that. It must be with my stance or my stride or something because you just get used to it. Denard Spann able to put that one away. A big out here in the sixth inning. Juan Lagares coming up. He's bounced to second, flied to center. Desmond Franzen looking at each other for a moment. Franzen is going to jockey with the runner a bit to keep him close at second. And a first pitch breaking ball in there from Jordan Zimmerman. Well, David Wright's a guy that'll steal a base if you fall asleep. I mean, I think right now with a four run deficit, Kevin Franzen keeping him close, but he doesn't have to keep him that close. You don't want to let him walk into third base. Just let him know you're there. And that's what he's doing. Let's go inside the numbers with Jeep. Juan Lagares against the Nets. 12 hits, five of them for extra bases. So he's hitting Washington to the tune of seven for 17. Had quite a game here yesterday with an RBI single going the other way in the first. Then that homer to the red seats for two runs two innings later. Line drive and unreachable for Franzen. David Wright read that extremely well and scores. If Franzen could have gotten a little higher, David Wright would have been doubled off the bag. He was running all the way. Just off the end of the bat and the Mets back to within 5-2. Now David Wright read this like there was two outs. Didn't even hesitate. Let's check out the pitch from Jordan. Looked like... Maybe a slider down. Franzen gave it a good effort, right with a good read. Scores easily to make this a three run game. And good trip to the mound right now by Ian Desmond. Adam, that's something you do a lot. What, what do you think he's saying to Jordan? Just giving him a breather right there, I would imagine. Uh, possibly changing signs. I don't know uh, why they would do it right now, but yeah, for the most part, uh, settling down a little bit. Not that Jordan needs it. He doesn't he get too fired up, but. That was a great read. That's risky there in a four run game. That, that could have easily been uh, a double play, but David's seen a few of those before. He's been around. Ruben Tejada do up next. Steve McCaddy to the mound. Mets have actually out hit the Nats 7 6. And a ball game. Washington leads 5 to 2, and suddenly the bullpen, a flurry of activity with Jerry Blevins and Aaron Barrett. I see that trip with McCaddy and we get the shots up here in the booth. I'm a professional lip reader, so or at least I think I am. <laughs> What's he saying right there? Well, I was trying to see what he was saying. And I think you're right. I think that's just a 20 second timeout. You know, just a little breather. He's laboring a little bit, coming to 90 pitches right now. Is he at 90? Yeah. Yeah, and it could have been get some guys up too. Give him a little more time down there. Still only one out here in the sixth. Ruben Tejada has bounced out to first, flied to left. But he has five career hits against Jordan Zimmerman. Tough to get a high call strike right now. Well, he wants it down because he's looking for a ground ball. So if, if he starts to miss high, that's the sign to everybody on the Nats bench that he might be getting a little bit tired. Got in on his hands there for a pop up. Lobaton, rather, Ramos in front, and then Rendon will call him off. Easier play for the infielder rather than the catcher, so Anthony takes charge for the second out. Well, you can't hear the communication up here, but when Wilson Ramos bailed out on this, it was kind of scary for a second. You watch the Buffalo come out in front of home plate. And who has priority here? Whoever calls it the loudest? Uh, yeah, I mean, ideally you would like your infielder to grab it if you can. The third baseman coming in here. You definitely don't want the pitcher in there. So, yeah, you can see right there, Anthony's yelling the whole time, and Buffalo got out of the way. But there's your high pitch that when they hit out of the ballpark, it's a bad pitch, and when they pop it up, it's a good pitch. Good call. You know? Zach Wheeler is on deck. That could change. And now the Mets are closer. Coming around to score. 
And then a runner out at second base. Back play. As Centeno will drive in their third run of the day and then run them out of the inning with another guy at third base. Hey, thanks Thank for you. coming. We know you got to go hit, so we appreciate it. That's some of the, the funnest times I've had broadcasting. Appreciate Guys, you coming I had a here. blast. I may sneak back in tomorrow. Oh, you know. Anytime, bro. All right. Adam, thanks, thanks, thanks so much, buddy. Great to see you. Best of luck. Adam LaRoche joining us for a couple of innings. Nats by two. presented by authority the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals well, let's check out that play to end the sixth inning it looked like the Mets are out in a big not in a big time comeback and Sentinel with the base hit up the middle. Nice job. Two out knock scores a run. And right here, trying to get in the scoring position. A big time mistakes. Jordan Zimmerman on the ropes. And the young player makes a base running mistake to bail out Jordan Zimmerman. And watch the tag by Ian Desmond. Facial insult to injury. Bottom of the sixth inning. Tyler Moore. And out there a deep short. Up the middle is Ruben Tejada. Nats box score. A run in the second on the Desmond Homer. Ramos drives in two in the third with a double out to left center. Then he drives in two more in the fifth with a base hit down the left field line while being jammed. The Nats might need more. Franz and McLeod the next two. So that play went eight, five, six. And then you can make an argument that the Mets have run themselves out of a chance to either be even or have a lead in this game. Also earlier, that 3-6-5 double play when they got Murphy rounding third base in the first. Franzen asked for timeout, didn't get it, stood straight up, and then took one right down the middle, and he's frustrated that he was not granted timeout. Zach Wheeler has been quick pitching guys here and there today. Not consistently, but he's been doing it. So the pitch before Kevin Franzen asking for timeout. Watch, looks up and he's already in his delivery. He's not ready. I don't know that he asked that emphatically, but he was quick pitch. No balls, two strikes, and a breaking ball chop foul. Wheeler due to bat first in the seventh, probably it for him. That he's probably only in the game because of that base running play. The Mets surely would have hit for him down by a couple with runners all over the bases. Franzen will reach out and uh, foul it over to David Wright. Two outs. All right, it's time for all of you fans to tweet your photos. You hashtag Mass and fan photos for a chance to have it shown in a future broadcast. We'll show one today. This is brought to you by AT&T. 
Do you ever have those experiences in life that just don't compute in your brain? I mean, that's what happened when Adam LaRoche came in the booth today. I turned around, <laughs> and I look, and there's the Nats' first baseman standing right behind us, and obviously that's never happened before, and I was just didn't register for about a good 10 seconds. But, boy, was that fun. You come up here anytime he wants. That was great. I think that's the first visit we've had in the booth by a disabled player in four years. When Pudge Rodriguez came up and hung out with us for a couple of innings one night. It's great. It's good stuff. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. One ball, one strike to McClough. I mean, it's been nice working with you. It's been nice knowing you. <laughs> but that was great. Speaking in the past <laughs> tense. It's been fun for my three plus years here, but yeah, it was great. I agree. I think it gave Nats fans a good insight to how intelligent Adam LaRoche is. What a heady baseball player he is. Yeah, if you're not around him, you don't know a whole lot about him. He's a little mysterious from the outside. Great guy as we've gotten to know him, and what a visit today. So we're going to the seventh. This game's got a long way to go. List. He said he had shoulder tightness yesterday, shoulder inflammation. He had trouble getting up to his arm slot. So we're going to show you an Exmo of a curveball. Check out the torque that that puts on Gio Gonzalez's arm. That's not where he's hurt, but when you talk about pitchers and the stress that's put on their arms, you kind of see with the Exmo a little bit better of how that, I mean, it's kind of gross, right? I mean, that's the torque that's put on an arm in the middle of the motion. And the curveball from Gio yesterday really wasn't finished. The fastball, I didn't think either. And we speculated that he wasn't right. And it turns out today that he wasn't. So a guy that took the mound for 161 straight starts goes on the DL. And Dan Coco, you got a little more on Gio. Yeah, guys, they sent Gio for an MRI today, an MRI algorithm, actually, which is where they inject a dye into his shoulder, and that'll allow the doctors to kind of get a better idea of what's really going on. They're calling it shoulder inflammation for now, and they'll wait for the MRI results and then kind of have a better picture of exactly what's going on. Uh, the, Gio would have been out for probably two starts, two turns, because of that dye that they injected in there, so they decided to just put him on the DL before knowing exactly what's going on. And the options to replace him are, you know, a couple that could go with Blake Trinan, who pitched two days ago down at AAA Syracuse. He could go Thursday in Pittsburgh and slide into Gio's spot. So we'll kind of have to check in maybe later today or tomorrow to find out the full results of that MRI on Gio's shoulder. All right, thank you, Dan Coco. Chris Young will hit for Zach Wheeler as the Mets come up in the top of the seventh. So both starters going six. And Drew misses away to Chris Young, who's two for three career against him. Storen had a scoreless seventh here on Friday night. 
Gave up a double to Eric Campbell as a pinch hitter, but got the other three guys to keep the Mets off the board. He got Wrecker, Tejada, and Eric Young, who in this situation is on deck. Wheeler able to keep this game reasonable for the Mets today because he was able for the first time in three starts to harness his control a bit. Walk two today. Neither scored. It was Rendon both times. So Wheeler six innings, five runs, six hits. Zimmerman six innings, three runs, eight hits. 2-1 to Chris Young. Hard hit. Rendon knocks it down. Textbook. Got his body right behind it. Took care over there at the hot corner. A pretty good at bat by Young off the bench. Gets a pitch. Hits it as hard as you can, but Rendon, who's playing in for the bunt, knows he's got a lot of time based on the speed of the ball and throws a seed across the infield. Good job of staying soft, staying with it, and now take your time, make a good throw. I see him just funneling that in right there. Not really any time at all. And look at the shards of grass, the blades everywhere. Now you got granules of dirt. I mean, I could watch anything on the X more. <laughs> Seriously. You got pretty excited by a guy sweeping the infield the other day. I think, like, yeah. <laughs> if you explode one of the lawnmowers cutting the infield with the grass coming out, I think that would be spectacular. Here's Eric Young Jr. <laughs> Storin struck him out on Friday night. And the guy they call EY, one for five career against Storin. Daniel Murphy on deck here in the seventh. He'd love to see David Wright lead off next inning. Drew and Tyler Clippert have been warming things up lately from the late part of the bullpen. Turns one over there, a beauty, 87 on the changeup. No balls, two strikes. Breaking ball in on his hands. One hopper, Ian Desmond. Two outs. So early today before the game, all the Nats out working on their defense. Guys taking ground balls, but there was also guys taking fly balls in the outfield. Tony Tarasco hit him off the fungo and name that Nat. I think he's somebody we talked to Adam LaRoche about. And we watched him do this for about 20 minutes and he looked good. Zach Walters out there with Ryan Zimmerman and the reason they're taking the balls off soft toss on outfield coach Tony Tarasco it gives you a more realistic look off the bat. If you hit him off a of fungo, it's not the same. But when you do it where the ball is actually coming off a of bat, it gives you a better look. And you and I were up here doing our lineup cards. Very impressed with Ryan Zerman, the routes he was taking and how he was catching balls in center field. Looking good. Daniel Murphy. One for five career against Drew Storen. Who got ahead. And a ball off to the left side. 0 and 2. Murphy lined out hard to Worth in right field last time. In St. Louis, by the way, Justin Upton just homered. But St. Louis had scored three to take the lead. So it's Cardinals three, Braves two, fifth inning there. Storin with that killer slider and Murphy not biting. Right side, Franzen will cover it. And what a good seventh inning for Drew Storm. On a beautiful day at home, he gets the ball and the ball game to the seventh inning stretch. Beautiful day on the mass in the
three and three career against the Nats in eight starts with a high ERA though 553. Back to the mound after a good start in Arizona. Digging in will be Steven Strasburg. He's three and nine, three and three. Over his last five starts, a one eight nine earned run average. Johnny and Ray from the ballpark, six thirty Nats extra, and then FP and I from the booth at seven o'clock. The Red Legs are in for three night games Monday, Tuesday, and a late matinee on Wednesday. Well, it's time for Yellowwood bringing the lumber, and Wilson Ramos, the Buffalo, definitely brought the wood today. So this is the third inning, double in the gap. That scored two, Anthony Rendon, Jason Wirth. Then we'll go to the fifth inning for the Buffalo. Just a lousy single down the left field line. That scores Jordan Zerman, Denard Spann. So Wilson Ramos, the Buffalo, <laughs> having a big day, and the Nata dudes are digging it, and so are we. Four RBI, that's one shy of his career high. He had five once. I think it was on the 4th of July, wasn't it? It was. Year? Isn't it great the way things catch on and the kids get behind it? Most towns fall in love with baseball, or has fallen in love with it. It's great to see. It's great to see kids at the ballpark, families at the yard. And everywhere you go around town, people are wearing the curly W. It's awesome. Chris Young will stay in after pinch hitting and play left field, replacing Eric Young. So the Mets pitcher, Jay Uris Familia, will be batting in the number one spot. And Familia will be making his 18th appearance. He was the losing pitcher on opening day. But the Nats were able to win in New York. 19 innings, 15 strikeouts, but 10 walks. I mean, he's a guy with electric stuff. You just got to get him in the strike zone. Well, social media weekend's almost over, folks. It's this weekend presented by Navy Federal Credit Union. Masson will be rewarding fans with great prizes and exclusive opportunities. Be sure to follow the action on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by using hashtag MassonSMW. Social media weekend. Screech is digging it. He's digging it. Got the glove on. I love to see the kids with the picker at the ballpark. That is perfect. Nice mustache, sir. Looks good on you. <laughs> Jay Uris Familia, 24 years of age, from Santo Domingo of the Dominican Republic. And hitting for Drew Storen, who just had a really nice inning, 1-2-3 in the seventh, will be Zach Walters. Yeah, Familia's fastball is averaging 96, so... Walter is going to get a piece of cheese right here. The slider is 85 and the change up is 90. Fastball away. Peanuts are back, folks, at Woodbridge, May 20th, with a midweek series against the Lynchburg Hillcats. And those guys are so tough. There are plenty of promotions at the Fitz, including two for Tuesday, Belly Buster Night, and Thursday Cheers. Come down and see the future Nats. Call the number on your screen or go to the website for details. Zach Walters in this series, 0 for 1, lined out to the base of the center field wall here last night. And he takes a hack off to the left side. One ball, two strikes here, bottom of the seventh. Nats are trying to make it five and one against the Mets this year. And grab some home field momentum with Cincinnati coming in. And then next week we'll be in Pittsburgh for three starting on Thursday. Over but low. <laughs> and one Centeno was squared up to throw the ball down to David Wright. Around the horn. Let's see what the Mercedes pitch I track. Mean, we've been talking about all day. Young umpires don't like to ring guys up on called thirds. That's right down the middle at 98 miles an hour. And hmm, oh, holy cow. Zach Walters with the horseshoe in his back pocket on that one gets another chance. And I'm swinging at this no matter where it is. This is like bonus coverage right here. He'll cork it hard and just foul. Got all of that.
in a 2-2. Bounce right side. Murphy. The ball backed him up a little bit. Had a lot of spin on it. Walters hustling all the way. One out. I'd be the opposite if I was a rookie ump. I'd be Enrico Palazzo back there just moonwalking on people with two strikes. Of course you would. Ringing everybody up. And if they said anything, I'd say swing the bats. Top of the order, Denard Spann. Double last time after the Jordan Zimmerman base hit. And right now, that two run rally in the fifth, the difference in the game with Wilson Rommel's driving both of them in. Span facing Familia for the first time. Well, score four. Turn on the fog machine and the laser lights. The Nats are 18 and 1. I didn't know that Kevin Franzen had turned the clubhouse into a disco after every win. Well, I did. I just didn't know if it was for public knowledge, but Adam LaRoche let us all know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's certain things that stay in the clubhouse, and I didn't know if that was one that didn't, but LaRoche. Adam telling us that there's a huge laser fogger and actually I have that laser fogger for Halloween and it is awesome. Well each guy brings something a little bit different to a ball club. Target away. One and two and span able to lay off that pitch that really missed from the other side of the plate and the counts 2 2. Nationals and Mets will easily draw over 100,000 this weekend. We'll give you the total for today when we find out. It'll be pretty good. And that's up and away, three and two. Well, no doubt about it. Five runs on the board today because Span and Rendon have been on base a combined four times. When they both get a hit, the Nats are hard to beat. And in the air, short right center. Murphy makes the early call and then called off by Juan Lagares, who covered a lot of ground. Two outs. On Thursday, June 5th, the Nats take on the Phillies. Four o'clock start. The plain white tees will kick off Nats Live free postgame concert series presented by the Travel Channel. Don't miss a chance to see two-time Grammy Award nominee. They are known for their hits. Hey there, Delilah, and Rhythm of Love. The postgame concert is free with your June 5th ticket. So call the number on your screen or go to the website. Rhythm of Love. I like it. There you go, plain white tees. And don't wear your plain white tees because the players can't see the baseball when that happens. We're red. Red Doan working on a perfect day. Walk. Single. Run. Walk. First thing I'd look for in day games behind home plate playing center field is how many people had white t-shirts on. And there would be times when a lot of people had them on and I couldn't see the baseball off the bat. And it's a scary feeling just seeing a white backdrop with the ball coming at you and it took time to get reads on it during day games. So Wear your dark shirts to the games and then put a white one on when the opponent's on defense. <laughs> Good take by Rendon. Two balls, one strike. That's why when the teams in the playoffs give their fans the white towels to wave around, mm. I always cringe when I see that because you're actually doing a disservice to your ball club. They can't see the ball off the bat. 2-1. Rendon a little bit late. That's why the Nats were smart in 2012 with the red towels. 
I don't know if you've ever been down in the stands for one of those scenarios, but for seven innings or eight innings, the lint is flying all over the ballpark. <laughs> it's a little bit different. I'll take anything over the thunder sticks, though. Yeah, those are tired. Oh. Two two to Rendon. Bases empty, two outs in the seventh. And he may be about to get on base for the fourth time today. Three two with worth waiting. And it might be worth waiting for. Anthony Rendon seeing the ball well today. He's on base for the fourth time. Jason Worth is 0 for 3 today. Reached on an error that could have been ruled a hit back in the third. This might not be a bad time for Anthony Rendon to giddy up here with two outs, even though Jason Worth is hitting. You're up by two runs. See if Familia is quick to the plate or not. See Rendon's lead down the right. Pretty big. Looks like a good jump. And he is in there by plenty. He's going to get up and race to third base. Anthony Rendon over at third with two outs on his second steal of the year. Yeah, throw just rode up toward right field. Great jump by Rendon. Look how fast he gets. And how quick he gets there. I mean, just first step quickness. Sentinel with a throw into center field. Rendon up to his feet quickly, gets to third base. Good aggressive base running by Anthony Rendon. And anytime the Narn Span gets a day off, you would think Anthony Rendon would be the leadoff hitter. I mean, he's been on base doing it all today for the Nats. Scored a couple of runs, three walks, stolen base. And now it just takes a base hit to give the Nats a three-run lead. Tyler Clippard has been ready in the bullpen. Storen coming off a perfect seventh inning. So things are set up for the Nats here. How big will the cushion be? Fastball right in there. One ball, two strikes, 97. They want it inside. It missed on the other side. Ball two. Good take by Jason Worth. Another full count. Buffalo lurking. Second best career RBI day already. And work takes a slider out to short. Handled by Ruben Tejada. And the Nats are gone in the seventh. They've stranded four base runners today. Five, three lead, six important outs to get on a gorgeous day at the ballpark.
having a big day. Two for three, a double, four RBI. Anthony Rendon doing his best leadoff hitter impersonation. Three walks, a stolen base, a run scored. Jordan Zimmerman doing a nice job, a quality outing. Six innings pitched, three runs, eight hits. But let's go back to the second inning. And one of the farthest taters we've seen this year on the inner half, right into Ian Desmond's turbo zone. And it was loud, and it was high, and it was far. Over the bullpen. Great catch by the fan in the light blue shirt. Jose Lobaton taking the lid off. And Ian Desmond absolutely locked in. Starting to put this ball club on his back. Remember our Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers are donating $250 to the Children's National Medical Center for every home run an Nats player hits this season. So Ian Desmond, $250. Bucks. It's for a wonderful cause. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. And Tyler Clippard on for the Nats. 22nd time. 196 ERA, 185 opponents batting average, 26 strikeouts in 18 innings. First up, David Wright. Six for 19 career against Clippard. He struck out David Wright with a runner aboard in the eighth inning Friday. David Wright today, a perfect day with a walk and two hits. Clipper drops it to the outside edge. Looked like the breaking ball to the right-hander. That's a change up that got away from him way upstairs. So the other night, the problem for Clippard was the fastball command. Did a good job of getting out of the eighth inning. But like I always say, when that fastball's in the zone, he's a tough guy to hit. That was a swing, David Wright. Steering down Lance Barrett, the first place umpire, first base umpire, and one out. Close. Tough call. I feel like that could have gone either way. And Clippard and the Nats will definitely take it. The elevated fastball, you a late swing from right. And I think he struck out on a very similar pitch off Clippard the other night. Threw him some changeups early and sped him up late. Here's Curtis Granderson, who Clippard got on a ground ball Friday. Drops a change up and misses away. Granderson 0 for 2 career against the Nats setup man. Ah! On the edge. One ball, one strike. Five three Washington. Even though the Mets. Have eight hits, the Nats have six. Wilson Ramos, the big difference in this game with the bat. There's that 92 riding high, one ball, two strikes. Five has been the magic number to win a ball game in this series. Yeah. Nats trying to hold on to this one. And a 2 2 in on his hands. Popped up right side, right by the dugout. And unreachable as it hits the roof. Here's your ATT fan photo we promised you earlier in the game. And that is Jacob and Patrick Miller. And that is the real names, folks. I did not make those up today. They're from Fairfax. They are our graphics producer's kids, Adam Miller, with. I think that's Teddy. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Great pick, guys. Way to go. Nata dudes on display. I love it. Nice. Yeah, they sent him in like everybody else and got picked at random. Yeah. Nice going. Three balls and two strikes now with Lucas Duda.
on deck. And if we don't know their names, as you know, I'll make them up. And where you're from. Nailed it this time. Nailed it. Three two change up three two heater. I'm going three two heater right here. And he got the ground ball. Tyler Moore scrambles. Clipper to the bag. Well done. Two outs. Tyler Moore having a big day at first base, making a lot of nice plays, getting a lot of action over there, and that's the way you want it. Well, it's really our first extended look. I mean, last year's or two years ago as a rookie, almost all of his action in left field. Last year, split time infield, outfield. Good job getting over there. Big hop, underhand feed, give him a little lead, find the base. Perfect. Spring training. Here's Lucas Duda, who Clippard got on a fly ball to center Friday night. Left handed batter, 0 for 9 career against him, and the fastball misses away. And he delivers a 2 0 fastball right in there. So we said the other day, in case you missed it, Tyler Moore in 118 plate appearances as a first baseman. That's 39 games, is hitting 346, 37 for 107 with six home runs. Comfortable over there. Yeah, 82 on the changeup missing. Now the Braves have battled back and tied St. Louis. They're 4 4, sixth inning. That's a half game behind Atlanta. And a 3 1. Threw him a change up to get a foul tip. Well, that's a dead fish right there. 3 1 change up. Good arm speed and had some pretty good late fade, too, due to convince he was getting a heater. That would have been two. Then he goes fastball at 93. I think he goes 3 2 change up here. But as a hitter with a 93 mile an hour fastball, you have to respect it. And a fly ball out to left center, Nate McClough. And Tyler Clifford now has a streak of nine and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings out of what's becoming baseball's best bullpen.
by PNC Bank for the Achiever in You by our Washington BMW Centers and by Buffalo Wild Wings. Give the gift everyone loves. A Buffalo Wild Wings gift card. The perfect gift for dads and grads. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings. Beer. Buffalo's Sports. Only when you're watching post-game highlights. Tatanka. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's an endorsement in there somewhere for Wilson Ramos and Buffalo Wild Wings. Fans follow every Nationals game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, score, stats, audio. You hear him chanting Wilson in the background? I love it. Free MLB.tv game of the day, and the longest promo in history is over. <laughs> Well, I wanted to hear the Wilson chance. I love it. So they picked out his first name to chant. And it'll be Wilson and Dice K. That is fantastic. Facing the 33-year-old right-hander who played for the Seibu Ball Club in Japan. Eight years worth. Came to the Red Sox in 07. Won 15 games and 18 games and kind of bouncing around since because of injuries. Three and three and seven starts for the Mets at the end of last year. And all he has is a fastball, slider, cutter, curveball, change, and a split. Maybe the rosin bag at times, but his fastball average is 90. And he can figure out the rest. We don't have time. Arsenal graphic, not enough room for all of that. Ramos today, two for three, two run double, two run single. And I didn't think he could reach that slider to follow it off, but he did. And a one-two. Matt Suzaka tried to get him on the front door. Pretty good take, two-two. Little pause in the delivery. Little pause in the delivery. And if you're wondering what that does to you as a hitter, I mean, your rhythm goes with the pitcher's rhythm. I think Adam Wainwright is the best in baseball of varying his wind-ups to where he'll speed you up. He'll go hands over the head one time. He changes his delivery to disrupt the hitter's timing. And oftentimes, pitchers will have the same delivery, and the pitch itself disrupts the timing. But many times, or sometimes, I should say, you'll have guys like this that try to disrupt your timing by their delivery. It's when do I go back as a hitter? Do I start on the, the third pump, the fourth pump? Like, what is he going to do up top? And I think he'd be effective if he just went up there for a half a second and delivered on a big pitch. Might get a pitch by somebody. Full count now as Ramos leads off the eighth. Good at bat. He's on for the third time. Wind is whipping into the ballpark now from the north. Coming right down Half Street. Through the opening out in the left center field bleachers where Johnny and Ray are waiting for Nats extra post game. And whatever that is, is whipping around. You know, in, in all my years, one of those has never gotten me to stop and buy a car. Or whatever. <laughs> it, 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 it may make me go the other direction, to be quite honest. <laughs> Truck mentions to me or a mattress. Ramos rumbling into second base. Got a good secondary lead there. Good read by the Buffalo. He's been all over the place today, and the Nats could use a few more runs. We'd love attack on at least one right here, but watch him reading the split in the dirt. 
Hmm. And it gets past Sentinel. And Ramos advancing, and it was close. Right there, he stayed on the base nicely with his hand. Yeah, swing and a miss on that one. So Ian Desmond 0 and 1 here. Tries to wait for that pitch. He's out ahead. One for two against Dice K. And that was in Boston a couple of years ago when he made 11 starts. No balls, two strikes to Desmond. One for three today with his seventh home run of the year. Eight RBIs in his last six games. And that one had one Centeno scrambling. So 12 against the Braves with 15 now against the Mets. Including a two run shot yesterday. Had one in New York earlier. Then a one two pitch. Ian fouls it out of play. Got a pitch right there in two strike fight mode. It's a big run on second base for the Nationals. They would love to play Wilson Ramos and make it a three run lead. Yes, Soriano has needed every bit of every cushion lately the Nats could give him into the ninth. And a one two delivery. Ian Desmond hanging tough. This will also tell you something about how Ian's going. When he's struggling, he just doesn't hang in there with two strikes and follow a bunch of pitches off. But right now, as Nissan tracks the at bat, he is. The red swinging strikes. On that, wow. wow. Getting some big hacks. Well, as a hitter, when you do this, you foul one straight back. You're telling everybody in the ballpark, especially Dice K in the split, that you're right on. I doubt he gets the same pitch here. And as a hitter, you start to think, okay, where's he going to go now? He can't throw that pitch again. There's no way. Desmond on a good take. He has worked the count back even here. By the way, great crowd again today. 36,000. 965. A three game total of 112,603. So the Mets and the Nats average 37,000 over 500 this weekend. Two, two to Desmond. Breaking his bat and dropping one into right field in front of Granderson. Over to third base, Wilson Ramos. And Ian Desmond has his second hit of the day. Boy, great read by Wilson Ramos. If he hangs out to wait for this to drop, he may not advance to third base. Nice at bat by Ian Desmond, sticking his nose in there and fighting, just putting it in play with two strikes, and he gets the bonus plan. He moves Wilson Ramos. And he gets a base hit. Bat tied to Hero. And just drops this in perfectly, but Ramos was off to the races. He did not wait for that ball to drop. He knew it was going to drop or took a gamble that it was. And even though that hurt Ian Desmond's hand, he'll take the base hit. Infield in, first and third, nobody out. And Tyler Moore trying to put an exclamation point on this one. Definitely run on Dice K. At times, he's very deliberate to the plate. And with that whole third to first move thing outlawed, you can get a better jump at first, obviously. Right down the middle. Tyler Morrow for three today. Spectacular defensive play on the first at bat of the game. Has handled first base beautifully this afternoon. Again. 1-5-0 to the plate right there. That is more than ample time for Desmond to get the second, should he choose. He's got a lean. He's holding. And that is hard hit. It's caught by David Wright. 
Ramos stayed home at third. Desmond staying home at first. One out. A nice play by David Wright. This ball scalded off the bat of Tyler Moore. Just a reaction play, a little dive toward the line. On the hooking, sinky line drive off the bat of Tyler Moore. Good swing, nothing to show. Kevin Friends in 0 for 3 today. This is where if Matt Williams believes that Daisuke is going to throw his hitter a strike, you can go hit and run this situation. you got a good runner at first base. A pitcher is deliberate to the plate and a guy that can handle the bat. It all adds up if you want to do it. Squeeze is also in play too, right? Good guy. As you mentioned, friends and can move the ball around, but he's a good bunter as well. David Wright deep at third. Franzen will pull it to the shortstop. They're going to get one, and the throw is wide. Ramos scores, and the Nats have a 3 1 lead as Franzen gets his sixth RBI. Good slide by Ian Desmond. He's digging it. But a good late clean slide by the Nationals shortstop to run a little traffic. So Daniel Murphy couldn't turn this double play to end the inning and it leads to a run for the Nats. Nice play by Tejada from his heels from his backside I should say. But look at Desmond. And Daniel Murphy wanted nothing to do with Ian Desmond and turning this double play. Watch him back away. Nothing on the throw, and that allows Kevin Franzen to beat the relay and Wilson Ramos to score. It's a big run. It is. Nats by three. A few moments ago, Ryan Matthews joined Soriano with the bullpen. If Washington would score another run, it appears Matthews would pitch the ninth. But right now, it is a save scenario. One ball, one strike to Nate McLeod, who's 0 for 3. And against Daisuke, Matt Suzaka career, 2 for 3 with a home run. See, I like what Adam LaRoche said about Nate McLeod the last time he was up or when Adam was up here. It's stuff that maybe the fans don't get a chance to see when veteran players recognize a guy grinding out at bats, even though the numbers aren't there. And the fact that he brought that to our attention, I thought was great. You look at the average, it's obviously not where Nate wants it, but I agree with LaRoche. His at bats have been getting better lately. Starting to catch the ball out in front, making good decisions at the plate, and it'll come. And a 2 1 pitch. Well, look for something close. Nate McClough, a good pull hitter. And when you're ahead 3 and 1, you can pick your pitch. Fastball in, turn the fan on, see what happens. Good hack. Greg Dobbs hit the inning continues. Broke in with a pinch base hit. First game with the Nats Friday night. So Tyler Clippert and Drew Stewart have done the job out of the bullpen. Two scoreless, hitless innings. And a 3 2 runner going. McLeod fouls it straight back. Six three Washington looking for the series win. Cincinnati in for three starting tomorrow night. And they are getting hammered in Philadelphia right now, eight to two in the eighth inning. Mike Leake, Steven Strasburg tomorrow night. Three-two again. Swing and a miss. 
We're going to the ninth. The Nats have a three-run cushion as Franzen comes up with a big RBI in the bottom of the eighth. Go all the way back to the first inning. First batter of the game, Eric Young Jr. He can try to bring one with him. And Tyler Moore is going to sell out and make one of the better plays we've seen all year. Look at the effort from Tyler Moore. Parallel to the ground, reaching out. Great shot right there. And a great play and a great way to start this ball game up. And a great way to end this game would be a little untucked from Rafael Soriano who's on for the save. Anxious moments here on Friday night, of course, when he walked two men, Lagaris and Eric Young with two outs, and then Daniel Murphy pinned Jason Worth up against the bullpen wall. Today he'll face Lagaris, Tejada, and the catcher Juan Centeno. The Mets do have one left handed bat on their bench in Bobby Abreu. And he's on deck. He has stepped to the on deck circle. Lagaris. Walked against Soriano with two outs on Friday night. First pitch well outside. Lagares went for two career against him. Bobby Abreu for Ruben Tejada next. Good cut fastball down the way. And the Mets have showed the Nationals that even though they're down by two or three runs late, they're not taking a strike. Like I said the other night, a lot of teams will take a strike. And you would think the Mets, whose philosophy is a lot like the Oakland A's, to work counts and to get a good pitch, would, but they don't. And a 1-1. Pretty good slider breaking away at the last second. Well, a lot of times pitchers see a guy chase a slider like that. They'll try to expand even farther outside with the next pitch. The thought process being, well, if he's going to chase that, maybe he'll chase this. And a one-two. Did he go? He did. No appeal needed. One out. Nice sequence right there. That's exactly what Soriano did. He got him to chase strike two, then he expands out further with a slider, and Ligaris can't hold up. And I don't think he, John Byrne even asked for help right there. He saw the swing himself, he called it. A nice pitch right there by Soriano getting the strikeout to start this ninth up. 38 year old Bobby Abreu, one for one career with a walk against Soriano. In this series, one for two with a pair of walks. That was on a Friday night start for him. Fastball just missing.
Ball two. Steven Strasburg, Mike Leak tomorrow. Oh, that's a great matchup. There's some good pitching matchups in that series. We'll see Doug Fister. We'll see Johnny Cueto in that series. Two balls, no strikes. And Soriano throws 90 right in there. Jason Worth back, then in, and then two outs. The one with the cutter and just got it off the label. Good pitch by Soriano for the second out. The third out's been a mystery sometimes for Rafael, so let's see if he can do a one, two, three save right here. And it's almost like at times he starts to think about it a little bit too much. Getting that third out, but so far so good. Everybody on their feet here in that's part. Well, they've seen an entertaining ball game today. Ramos has driven in four of the six. One out away from a series win. This is the catcher, Juan Centeno, who has two RBI singles today. But he made a mistake on the second one, getting tagged out at second base in the sixth when they had another runner at third base. I think that was the moment of this game so far. It was an aggressive mistake, but still... In the air, left center, a ways to go for Span in the left fielder, McLeod, and the Nats have won it. A 1 2 3 ninth, and Rafael Soriano with his 10th save in 11 outings this year. Well, this is a nice day for the offense all the way around. Anthony Rendon, a big day. Wilson Ramos, a big day. Ian Desmond got this party started with a home run. And the Nats win a series and continue their dominance over the Mets. And now bring on the Reds. They're ready. The Nats win the series and they lead the Mets in the season series 5-1. to one. More straight ahead.